Don't let anybody fool you. Pop's still strong. Something's a little different here. Now, if you notice, gone from um, saddles one, two, three, and four are the standard OEM bolts. And the reason being is because we're using a windage tray or a windage tray, depending on how you pronounce it, right? The standard OEM ones weren't going to work. And that is because of the amount of, well, quite frankly, stroke on the crank itself, all right? Now, Notice also, there's kind of some limitations here with the amount of bolt thread you have, okay? So, Dad went ahead and ordered a kit, okay? And the kit came with these studs on there. And the studs are just standard studs, but there was a caveat. You see, the thing is, is that these studs were super long, okay? And uh, because the studs are designed to help provide a little bit of extra clearance, on the windage tray or windage tray, um, the studs need to be in there and we didn't want to cut the studs. So what we had to do was we had to create a little bit of extra thread. Now the cool thing is, is that with the LA small block, okay, there is enough bore inside the holes for the bolts, but there's not enough thread. So we had to go past the existing thread using three different bits. And I'll show them to you here on the screenshot that dad saved when he was working on this. And essentially, you just run the one in, then you run the other one in, and then you finish up with the final thread. And it allows you to put the studs themselves into the, uh, well, for lack of better terms, into the block, right? And so that gives plenty of room for the, and you want to go, these go all the way down? All the way down, all right? For the windage or windage tray. All right, so we'll just simply line that up. I'm gonna do this blind here, but it's pretty easy. Just match up with the studs, and clearly, yeah, there's a lot more room there. Now, is your OEM style um, oil pan going to go on here? Yes. Oh, it will. Huh? I'll be. I was shaking my head. All right, we could try that if you want to go that route, but I don't think we're going to go that route. We're going to do something a little bit different because when you're pushing this much horsepower that we're aiming out of this motor, splashing the oil makes a difference. And even if it's just 30 or 40 horses, okay, that is a difference, especially on the racetrack. All right. So we're going to go ahead and um, this is all set in place. I showed you that. So we're going to go ahead and bolt these down just because. Did you get torque spec? Yeah, but I'm not going to torque them. All right, we're just going to set we these in place. Them turn the crank so we can make sure there's nothing. The bolts underneath can be adjusted to raise and lower it. Oh, nice. So if you didn't hear, those bolts can be adjusted. So you have, it looks like an extra half inch or more uh, of total adjustment. Do we need to go that much? I don't think so, but we're going to go ahead and give the crank a turn. Now, admittingly, all right, the space for the uh, counterbalancers look good, but we are now concerned with where the... Um, crank rods or the piston or the, yeah, the piston rods or connecting rods are at and there might be some touching so we're going to see what happens and see how far we go here we go and i'll know right away if it's if there's a problem looking oh i think we're good oh wait a minute nope nope all right so just that much it's like a little bit quarter inch Yep, exactly. So, I'm gonna loosen it up just a hair so we're not on that. There we go. And off they go. Is it those extra tight? Use your impact finger? Huh? Oh, it is? Am I not loosening it up enough? Oh, I see it right over there. It did, yeah, I see. Yeah. It's actually right here where it actually touched. Yeah. Came really close to that. Right? I'm going to let 
do where the count turns. Okay. Quarter inch. Maybe two threads exposed. Okay. All right, that's doing okay. So Pop's gonna get on here and measure it with a micrometer a little bit later on. Um, but we're just getting to make sure that we are in a good spot. He'll come back and get this more precise a little bit later on. But you get the idea, guys. Ready? It looks like cross ventilation is the way it turns. Because if it's spinning clockwise, it's just throwing, going with the wind. Yep, exactly. Oops, you went the wrong way. Clockwise, Mike. Oops, a little nudge there. That's on my end. Let me back that off just a hair. So, one last check. All right, so will the OEM pan work with this assembly? Let's find out. I'll be showing up. And that's uh, on close to the bolt holes. And yeah, other than that, you know, that's, yeah, if it's on the metal, if it's on the iron, it's fitting. Cool. And this is for initial start. Okay, so Pop wants to make sure, you can, we, we can hear you, but you can't hear you. He wants to let everybody know that we're going to use this only for our basic break in, right? But we're not going to be using this when we go to tune this in on the dyno, all right? When we go to the engine dyno, we got something a little different planned for it. Well, now that we have the valves initially adjusted, uh, it's time to go ahead and uh, check our oil, make sure that the, uh, uh, of course, the oiling system is running good. There's no clogs, which there shouldn't be because it was hot tanked and what have you. So what we're adding is we are adding in our Amsoil Z-Rod motor oil. It is an SAE 1040 and it's designed specifically for, well, hot rod motors. And of course, uh, you know, this is a uh, pretty much a hot rod motor. So uh, it's uh, definitely well beyond design and what it's supposed to do. Now the Z-Rod is, uh, the Z obviously stands for higher levels of zinc and uh, which is good for not only the break-in process, but uh, good additive for this uh, higher horsepower motor and of course the tolerance is needed for this particular application. Now while we are putting in our oil we are making sure that there's no leaks and then in a few moments we're going to actually going to spin the pump with a custom-made tool to ensure that everything is flowing as it needs to flow through. And this is a five quart system so all we're going to put in is five quarts of lubricating fluid. No leakings, we're good. All 
All right, so now that we have the tool in place, let's go ahead and give it a quick spin. And uh, we're gonna be looking for a couple things in here. Um, what are we looking for while it's spinning away, Dad? Okay. Oops. Hold, hold. You're leaking up your backside of the filter assembly. <laughs> 